Welcome. In this video and the next one, we'll define what is stationary phenomena, what is non-stationary phenomena, and how do we test that whether series is stationary or non-stationary using unit root tests. So please, with, uh, please be with me. And now we are going to see that there are two type of processes. One is stationary process. We'll, we have already defined in our last video and we'll define it today as well. What is non-stationary process? That will be a topic for the next one. So first of all, if your process is stationary, then the next stage is that you have to identify from ACF and PACF whether model is ARMA model, AR1 model, ARMA11, ARMA2, MA2. So once you identify the order, then you estimate if it is AR model, you may apply OLS. If it is uh, MA model, then you have to apply nonlinear least square or maximum likelihood estimation. Then you identify that whether it's parsimonious, you have to select appropriate number of legs. And if you put all together and this model passes diagnostic tests, then you have to go for forecasting for which we will we'll do in practice using R. So the non-stationary process, how we define whether process is non-stationary or not, what are its characteristics, what is its testing mechanism, augmented equivalent test, phillips Perron test or some other test we'll di discuss in our uh, next videos. So you see the theoretical concept of stationary phenomena is that if probability density function of a phenomena does not change over time, that is you have Actually, we observe one y1, but theoretical concept is that if we have many realizations of that yt, its distribution will be like this bell-shaped normal distribution. So you see, if this distribution behavior does not change over time, so we say process is stationary. But this is only a theoretical concept because in practice you have data, you have series, you don't have this... Uh, this uh, luxury of having this uh, probability distributions. So we will define what is stationary process and what is weak stationary process and then we'll use these two terms alternatively. Fine. So we have stationary process which means that as I have mentioned that all those distributions were have same behavior over time. So it means they, they are stationary. Same covariance structure their variance covariance does not change. But this is theoretical concept. What we have to do, we work with uh, empirical, you may say weak stationary process. And if data are underlying data are normal, then weak stationary and strong stationary are same. So in practice, what do we say? That the series we have, it's mean, whether we take the first 10 values and next 90 values, or first 20 values, next 80 values, or any any range so mean of yt mean of yt plus j at some other for this group for this group for this group that is that is almost similar that's almost same not exactly same variance is constant and covariance is a function of time and covariance is a function of time that is <clears throat> So covariance is a function of time. <coughs> that is, it it's 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 not a function of time. It's it's just just uh, you see, it's not time dependent. It's just uh, the, uh, you see uh, equal to it depends on the time uh, uh, time lapse between these two. I'll I explain it with uh, 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 with an example. This is variance uh, covariance of y t. This is y t plus j. Let's j is ten. Uh, minus 10. So this is yt, yt minus 10. No. You see, uh, what will be covariance of ys? Let's say ys is 15 and its lag will be 25. So covariance between y1 and y11 and covariance between y15 and y25, it's more or less similar. The only, only difference is that it's, it's, it depends on the time lapse. Okay, so we discuss in this video stationary process, identification, estimation, and the best way is always to plot, plot, and plot your series. 
all these codes, everything will be provided to you in this video link. I'll use simulated data and all these codes are given in the link. So this is your AR1 process. This is AR1 process with trend model. This is moving average model. This is AR and one model with break. So you see here we have introduced the break. I have this all these simulated series. So I shall share the codes with you in R. So this, this, is, this is a break. So you see behavior here is different than here. So it may be the mean is same in this bracket, in this bracket, but variability is different here as compared to this one. So series may not be non, may, be, may not be non-stationary. And if you take, uh, if you remove the diff, uh, trend by taking the first difference, if series behaves like this way, that is now you see its mean. If we take the vertical averages, its mean is about zero here. If we take mean here, it's almost zero here. If we take mean here, it's almost zero here. Or if we take this range, or we, if we take this range, or if we take this range, so mean, variance, covariance, they are more or less similar. So this series is called stationary series. This is a practical concept. This is what is what is what we do in, in uh, with data. So this is ARP model. I have discussed in earlier video as well that P is always reserved for AR process. Q is reserved for MA process. And if we have mixture of AR and MA, we, we write it as B, Y, T minus 1, T minus P, T minus 1. Okay, sorry. This is T minus Q. Okay. So, <laughs> This, this we have already discussed. <laughs> what are the tools for identification? How to decide whether your process is AR1, whether your process is MA1, whether your process is AR2, MA2? How you identify this model? AR2, MA2. Though there are auto auto uh, the, uh, model selection, but if we have to dig deeply and you have to understand phenomena uh, uh, in in depth, then you have to you have to do these things. Uh, you have to understand these things at your own. So, what are the tools to identify this? What are tools to identify this? If you see, if you recall my video on AR1, MA, AR2, MA1, MA2, ACF, PACF derivation, that will help us today in uh, how to identify. So what is autocorrelation? Correlation between YT, YT minus J, minus its mean, minus its mean, and rho J is covariance between YT, YT minus J divided by gamma naught. Gamma naught is variance of covariance between yt uh, 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 sorry this is standard deviation of yt standard deviation of yt minus j as i mentioned in my last video that these two are very close to each other so we usually consider it equal to variance of yt so therefore we could denote it by gamma naught that is covariance variance covariance at lake zero Covariance is a second moment. Covariance at leg zero is gamma naught. So what is correlogram? That's that's here it's written correlogram. Correlogram is basically plotting correlations against their leg values. So here you have legs, here you have correlations. So this plot against legs is called correlogram. And no, you see, this is model AR1 with coefficient 0.7. Uh, yt is equal to, I don't recall, uh, intercept, whether included or not, 0.7 yt minus 1. So your AR coefficient is 0.7. No. What is its autocorrelation function? If you recall my mathematical derivation from video, um, uh, th th uh, you will see that its autocorrelation decays geometrically. So you see at lag 0, it's always 1. Okay, fine, no problem. At leg 1, it's 0 0.7. At leg 2, it's 0 0.7 square. At leg 3, it's 0 0.7 cube. A1, A1 square, A1 cube, A1 4, A1 5. So if you recall, if you watch that video, and then, it, so it's a geometric decay. And we have seen that if it is a process moving average, and how does its ACF behaves? So you have MA1 process here with leg 0.7. So at leg 1, it's there. It's 
0.7 at leg 1 and then it becomes 0. So, moving average process MA1, we have drive that after first leg it will come out to be, its autocorrelation function will become 0, whereas autocorrelation function of AR1 model will uh, 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 decay geometrically exponentially. So, if it's AR3 model, its autocorrelation function will decay geometric, uh, geometrically. If it's correlogram for AR3 model, so it's declining geometrically. No, if it is PACF, no, partial autocorrelation function is, that is, you are holding the effect of other intermediating variables constant. So, you see AR1, AR1, its autocorrelation function at lag will be there, at lag 1 it is there and then it becomes 0. But, partial autocorrelation function of moving average model will behave the other way around, it will decay geometrically. So, in this case, Partial autocorrelation function of AR3, so at leg 1, at leg 2, sometimes at leg 3, it's not significant, but sometimes it's significant. So, it will die down at leg, please note it down, partial autocorrelation function for AR process will decay, uh, will be cut off at leg, at leg of that AR, whereas ACF of AR decay geometrically. Moving average process is just a mirror image. Moving average process is just a mirror image. So, in this case, you see, if we go to this one, partial autocorrelation function of AR1, so it's at leg 1 and then it becomes 0. It's in this range. Partial autocorrelation function of leg 3, 1 leg, 2 leg, 3 leg, and then it becomes 0. So, partial autocorrelation function, I, I'll, I'll show you in a while, please, uh, I, uh, I, I, after this, there will be a next, uh, this one, I'll, I'll explain it. Okay, whereas autocorrelation function, you see autocorrelation function for MA3 will become zero after first three legs, one, two, three. So, so these spikes are beyond these two plus minus two standard errors. But partial autocorrelation function of moving average order model, moving average model will decay geometrically. It will not become zero immediately. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Well, this is exactly the reverse in AR process. In AR process, this will decay geometrically. This will cut off at lag AR. And in moving average, it's the other way around. So, I hope I have made the point. So, we'll summarize the basic patterns to look for actual data series. You have to look what is your actual series look like and then you have to go for uh, estimating models. Try to understand this one and you will find it just if you browse, uh, the, the, if you uh, in, the browse in Google, you will find this one. So, please, and this will help. This is a tool for identification. If it is AR1 process, its autocorrelation function will decay geometrically and its partial autocorrelation function will cut off at leg 1. Ah, interesting. If it is moving average, its autocorrelation function will cut off at leg 1 and its partial autocorrelation function will cut off at leg it will decay geometrically. And if B is less than 0, so it means it's it's oscillating because if it B is minus 0 0.7, so first one will be minus 0 0.7, next one will be plus 0 0.4, next one will be minus plus, so it will be oscillating. So if it is AR process, it will decay geometrically, it will, so AR3, AR2 like that. And same is the case, moving average, its ACF will cut off at leg Q, and its PACF will be geometrically decaying. But if it's a mixture of both, then, then your ACF and PACF will both decay geometrically. I hope uh, I have made the point. If you have any confusion, please comment in the, in the video link. I'll, I'll, try to, uh, I'll try to respond. 
so 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 we have we have uh, you no know, some tools in our hand so acf that do not decay to zero could be sign of non stationary what i have been focusing that it decays geometrically ar process it decays geometrically exponentially if it's not decaying it is a sign of non stationarity i will see we'll see with the with the real uh, uh, the series from us acf of both ar ma decay gradually drops to zero for ma if it is ar process the acf for ar decays geometrically or gradually whereas for ma it becomes zero we have discussed this partial auto correlation function behaves the other way around we have just discussed these things or we are rewriting these things so what is box jenkin methodology that first of all we have to find out what is significant correlations both in acf and pacf and then to identify whether uh, uh, what is actual model and usually you don't need acf pacf uh, to do manually we do it with the help of computer packages whether it's r python stata eviews whatsoever it is you will you will get it okay so once you have this one no for example if i have been given a series and i think that ar sorry <clears throat> i think ar1 model is better while well, your judgment is that ar ma11 model is better another group thinks no we think that ma2 process seems an appropriate fit so one series may have many candidate models so then we have to find out whether these three models pass diagnostic tests if they pass diagnostic tests then the next stage comes which one is best model then that has to be determined by your forecast criteria which provides you minimum root mean square error or mean absolute error or mean absolute percentage error whatsoever your criteria is so then we try to fit uh, out of these three models we try to find out which one is the best model which one is the best model so sometimes fit versus parsimony parsimony means you have a brief model is better simple model is better white noise that is the criteria for model to be correct all these models if all these models have residuals which are white noise it means all these are candidate models it means all these models pass diagnostic tests now which one is better which one is best that you have to apply, apply uh, forecast criteria you must see is there any structural break you will see many series that there, there is always a jump there is there is some structural breaks in them so you must capture those structural breaks otherwise your forecast will be very very uh, uh, erratic so aic criteria basically the original one was r square then someone said that no r square has issues then adjusted r square some penalty was imposed and then someone said no the penalty is not of desirable level then finite prediction error by shaw was proposed but later on akai proposed his criteria then Uh, schwarz came and schwarz base criteria or sic then hanan quinn criteria so these are all how many legs should be selected you can you can apply these criteria maybe one criteria sometimes these these have conflicting views at the moment i am not explaining then comes are those your residuals white noise so instead of testing each and every residual to go minus b uh, below minus 2 or plus 2 so it will be considered as significant so the, and we may consider there is uh, there is auto correlation but it's 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 not it's not the case because you see out of 20 1 out of 20 we may get by chance 95% confidence interval 95 uh, 5% uh, level of significance so box and pyers suggested a test statistics they mentioned that usually your standard error s is 1 over n so um, and you if it it if 1 over n yeah this is a, a mean is 1 over n and standard deviation is 1 over n square root plus minus 2 times 1 over n square root is your plus minus 2 standard errors 
and they considered that instead of looking at individual correlation at each and every residual correlation that is ut with ut minus 1 ut with ut minus 2 so you must see correlation overall that is from leg 1 to leg s r square k and times p this is your q statistics jung box q, uh, there is another one jung box as well so one is both both are both my yes the same that whether your residuals are correlated or not if this is not rejected if this is this is this is not uh, significant we say that all core residual correlations are zero it means all those models pass diagnostic tests if it is significant it means residuals are auto correlated you need to add more legs you have to re-specify model you have to re-identify model and then proceed further forecastability the way is uh, forecastability is usually if you see uh okay netflix netflix in 2006 posed a challenge of forecasting and the 10 percent uh, improvement in root mean square error and it was mentioned that nine one million or ten million dollars will be uh, one million i think dollars award will be given so they have had some data with them and the other data they have made public and then every when whenever one submits they see that how does it behave so it was in 2009 probably when the price was decided anyhow so if you have to 300 observations you may for learning purpose you may have 250 observations and the rest 50 observations are retained and then those rest uh, 50 observations are your actual values those 50 observations are uh, uh, 50 uh, 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 one two these are your actual observations and these are your four cost observations then you see the gap between them the, the, and that is your forecast error and then you can take forecast error square and sum of forecast error square divided by n will be mean uh, square error and if you take its root it will be root mean square error you can look, uh, look into these things granger newbold and dibold uh, dibold mariano has also proposed some other criteria for this uh, 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 to assess whether forecast error is small or large you can you can go through these things if far structural break you should see chow, chow break point test that you if you, if it's visible so for example from plot if you think then you must have this data separately estimated this one as separately estimated and we say that the, the and one model jointly estimated so try to find out chow test i'll discuss at some other time or you can go for cumulative sum test okay let's now go with some coding and r, r is awesome in this you see I have MA1 code which I'll share with you and at the same time its output you see that's that's nice how you 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 can do these things in our quarto markdown and you see oh so this is this is this is how MA1 model looks like similarly AR1 code so I'll provide you this is basically simulated code you have 5.8 total observations 200 you have set dot seed for reproducibility ar1 data so time series data and you have plotted it and it looks like this way so ma out one output and ar1 output ma1 output ar1 output we will we'll see more on this so acf of acs of ar1 model so that's what we have been talking uh, for last many uh, minutes now you see in this case in this case what's happening this is acf of ar1 so it will decay geometrically it will exponentially decay so at leg 0 it's 1 at leg 1 at leg 2 at leg 3 at leg 4 5 6 7 and then it decays like this way. whereas acf of ma1 model acf of ma1 model what should it be it should be zero after first leg so it's zero after first leg what is acf of ar1 this one what will be pacf of ar1 it should be zero after first leg what should be p acf of it it's pacf will be 
geometrically declining. So if your PACF is geometrically declining, ACF declines at leg one, I'll think that it's MA1 process. And if it's vice versa, ACF is declining geometrically, PACF is declining at leg at after uh, become zero at leg after a, uh, one leg, I'll consider it as AR1. I hope I made the point. Let's have a real data. So this is this is your real series. And now you can, uh, you may think, uh, I, we, we don't, we haven't yet discussed stationarity. So whether this series is stationary or not, we'll, we'll do this testing later on. But you see, if I take mean of this series in this range, it's here. In this, it's here. In this range, it's here. In this, so seems mean is not constant, but we haven't discussed so far formal. So you cannot represent it with a single series. Now we have its ACF of uh, this series. Look here, auto correlation function. Why we call it sample? Because we always have sample data. So ACF, PACF is only mathematical. Sample auto correlation function and par sample partial auto correlation function. But we use this word often. ACF means sample auto. Now you see, this is at leg zero. This is at leg 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 20, 25. So it means that after leg 25, 26, 27, 28, it's still not within these two plus minus standard errors. So your ACF is not decaying geometrically, which means series is non-stationary. We'll, we'll discuss it later on. What is non-stationary series? We'll, we'll define why is it important to study non-stationarity, how to determine whether series is non-stationary or not, that we I'll discuss in next uh, video. Please keep in touch, uh, stay tuned, and I'll share all these codes in, in the video link. Thank you, take care. Okay, one, one final thing that now you see, this series is also non-stationary because its mean is changing over time. Thank you for watching. Take care.